Welcome to another Megascorp Basics. Today we're going to learn how to set up overboost protection to prevent you from damaging your engine when you're boosted. So why would you want overboost protection? Well, when you first set up a turbocharged or supercharged engine, it is not uncommon to have some type of failure where the spring is too high in your wastegate or a line isn't hooked up correctly or fails or gets burned and and or a supercharger pulley is too large and you you overshoot your maximum boost target that you want to be at. So for example, you put a seven PSI wastegate spring in, something goes wrong with the way you've got the wastegate plumbed and it shoots up to like 20 PSI. That could absolutely damage your motor if it's not set up for it or mapped for it and this will help you prevent that. So we're just gonna show you how to set that up. So up in the top corner here, up uh, on this bar, you can see boost advanced, and the first drop down is boost control settings. This also houses the boost controller settings, but that will be for later in another video. Over here, just on the right, you'll see overboost protection. First, you need to click the drop down and select what type of overboost protection you'd like. You can use fuel, spark, or both. Both will be your safest bet, and that's what we'll select for this. However, fuel cut is typically fairly soft, and you will just feel the car stop without any explosions, pops, and bangs, and spark cut is the exact opposite of that. Spark cut only, you'll hear a loud bang because typically it cuts spark. There's a ton of fuel that is unburnt, and it goes into the exhaust, and then when the boost drops enough to kick back in and go below the boost cut protection, it will reignite and shoot a large flame to burn all that unburnt fuel out of the exhaust. Now, while that might sound fun and cool, it's actually sometimes disorienting because you'll hear a loud bang and you might think that it's something else. You might not think that it was your your overboost protection and it you, you could be scared that it was actual damage to the engine as well as spark cut only typically is not very healthy for valve train because of the pressure wave when it explodes in the exhaust. It can go back and pop rockers off and damage different things in your valve train. So I would suggest against spark cut and choose fuel or both. Both would be the most sure, sure way that your motor will just absolutely stop. It's like you just shut the key off if it overboosts. That's essentially what's happening. It's killing spark and fuel. Now, uh, maximum boost. This is in KPA, this is what you want to set your boost limit to. Now, typically I set this just over the limit of where my wastegate spring is, so that if i targeting seven PSI on a wastegate spring, I would set it to maybe eight or nine because a lot of the times you might overshoot that slightly, but that's just the way that your wastegate comes on or you know things aren't exact you can you sometimes you can not always get exactly seven maybe it's 7.7 .7 psi and then it comes back down to seven as you as the wastegate levels out so just set it slightly over your max limit so 100 kpa would be just naturally aspirated at sea level that's the max you're going to get so anything over 100 kpa will be boost pressure so for example if you want 14.7 psi of boost uh, that would be 200 kPa. However, if that's your target, you want to go slightly over that and give yourself a couple PSI of buffer, unless you're absolutely right on the limit. Just give yourself a buffer so you could set it at 220 kPa. So within reason, if the motor goes over that, you'll know there's probably an issue, but if, it, if, you're, if you actually want to run a 14 PSI wastegate spring, this won't prevent you from running that spring pressure, that boost pressure at an, in a normal circumstance. Now the hysteresis is how much the pressure needs to come down before the motor will turn back on, before the overboost protection is deactivated. So in this case, say it's 220, you are targeting 200 and it goes up to 220, stops the motor, and then it will come back down 10 kPa, so 210 before the motor kicks on again. In this case, since it's 
roughly roughly a little bit more than boost than you want to run 10 would probably be fine you could also set it up for 20 either way it's going to shut off and you'll know where your issue is and you'll probably go and check it again uh, you could also data log this while you're driving to see if you actually did hit your overboost. Down here in the bottom right hand corner there's a little red alarm that will go off and you can data log when that goes off. So the hysteresis is just how much does the boost need to drop before overboost protection kicks off again. And so probably 10 to 20 kPa is typical for this. All you need to do is go ahead and burn this onto your controller and save and you'll be set to go. This is absolutely something you should set up no matter what when you're setting up an ECU. I have seen lots of different people and YouTubers have issues where the overboost protection wasn't there and blew something in their engine and they wish they had this. So if you're gonna turbocharge or supercharge your engine, absolutely this should be one of the first things you do. Thanks for watching. I hope you have fun on your project and you get your mega squirt stuff set up and running right. If you like this content and you want to support it, consider becoming a channel member and like and subscribe to see more. Thank you.